Monday, September 6th, and the Pirates will be hosting SEC foes South Carolina at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium on Saturday in the home opener. We will hear from East Carolina head coach Mike Houston on Tuesday, but on Sunday night, our Dave Richmond took part in South Carolina head coach Shane Beamer's weekly teleconference. Coach Beamer discussed the Gamecocks' 46 to nothing victory over FCS foe Eastern Illinois in his head coaching debut on Saturday and what lies ahead with a trip to Greenville to take on a program that he's very familiar with due to his days as a player and coach under his dad, Frank Beamer, at Virginia Tech. Let's go to that audio with the first-year head coach of the Gamecocks right now. The video, uh, great night last week, like I talked about after the game. Uh, unbelievable energy from our fans from start to finish. Appreciate them. Uh, great win for us. Uh, happy for our players and, and the joy that they had out there on the field last night. Uh, really, really pleased, even more so today after watching the video of our defense and the way they play, just getting lined up, executing, tackling really well, playing physical, creating turnovers. That was fantastic to see. Uh, special teams was, uh, you know, thought we punted the ball well and and covered well for the most part. Some certain things to clean up, having or being able to block two punts was. Uh, anytime you you uh, score on defense and and block a punt, you're probably going to win. 100% of the time, and, and we scored on defense and, and blocked a couple, so that was great to see. Uh, and then offensively, you know, I thought we got better as the one thought uh, Zeb played really well. Uh, Eastern Illinois was, you know, bringing a lot of pressure and bringing and, and some movement uh, up front that we uh, needed to get a handle on early, and I think our guys did and, and settled down. And uh, got better as the game went on. We, you know, certainly all of us, coaches included, got to be a whole lot better uh, this week against East Carolina. Uh, but anytime you can win, have a shutout, and still have a ton of things to correct and improve up on, uh, that's like the ideal recipe for a opening game. And 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 we got it. Got to be a whole lot better uh, just from an execution standpoint on offense. Still had some formations that we didn't get lined up correctly whether it be wide receiver tight end splits or the actual formation. Uh, Got to be better on our communication. From that standpoint, getting in the right play, uh, that's coaches, players, all of us. Um, the, the penalties were very disappointing. You know, looking back at the video today, some of them were even dumber than they first looked like on uh, live when it happened last night. And that's something we, you know, spent a lot of time on and got to get corrected. You know, the one punk return, we had a, hole we had a you know block in the back we had a blind side block and and those are all the things that, that that we aren't have to be a whole lot better uh with that and then offensively really have to be much improved with our perimeter blocking uh, time our wide receivers and tight ends blocking in space for our running backs and and, and wide receivers on bubble screens and, and things like that and and in the run game and i didn't think we were as physical out there as we as we needed to be but uh overall you know great night exciting win happy for our fans happy for our players and uh back to work just got off the practice field here a few minutes ago injury wise came out pretty good nothing significant from last night we're good from that standpoint uh uh, luke Doty was at practice tonight didn't really do much but uh have every uh, uh belief that he'll be available uh saturday for us uh, Kevin Harris uh, was at practice and should be full speed this week as well. So other than a couple of the, you know, a little bit longer term guys that I've talked about before, we will be pretty healthy. And then uh, award winners, players of the game from last night, Zaquandre White was our offensive player of the game. Thought he played fantastic, played hard, played physical. Uh, love what that kid's about and love how passionate or love how, with the, how, love how much passion he plays with. Defensively, uh, we we chose Jalen Foster as our defensive player of the game. Did a great job back there in the secondary, getting guys lined up, playing physical, uh, had turnovers. Uh, just a uh, really solid night for, for Jalen and happy for him. Special teams-wise, uh, each week we, we kind of break it down a little bit in some different categories. So each week we'll probably have three for you. But that was uh, Debo Williams, Darius Rush, and, and Matthew Bailey. Bailey did a nice job snapping for us all night. Debo uh, was involved with the uh, p- the pump blocks, obviously, and then Darius Rush, just the the speed that he played with out there uh, at, as a gunner on our punt team. 
Uh, our scout team players of the week were um, uh, offensively Rico Powers, defensively Hot Rod Fitton, and special teams wise Jesse Sanders. So I'm proud to or honored to award those guys with with that this week. We had a good team meeting. Uh, went through a lot that we got to be better at, and, and building on the things we did well. Excited to get to Greenville this week. Obviously. Uh, place I've been many a time and, and one of the uh, toughest places to play that, that I've been at uh, as a coach and, and I know it'll be rocking in a great atmosphere up there on Saturday and and uh, we need to have a heck of a week of practice to go up there and play well on Saturday afternoon so with that I'll be glad to answer any questions. Hey Shane it's Dave uh, looking at your quarterback situation this week I mean when Luke is fully healthy how does this go? Is this going to be a fully open competition? Does Luke get credit for what he did in the past? I mean, how will this go between choosing between him, Zeb, or anybody else on Saturday? We'll see. I'm not going to get into naming who our quarterback is before we get up to East Carolina on Saturday. We'll see how the practice goes. Again, I'm not putting Luke Doty out there before he is ready and um, and uh, uh, before he's ready and healthy. And, you know, just got off the field. We're getting into our East Carolina prep here tonight and tomorrow. And, Getting ready for practice on Tuesday, and we'll see how the week goes. Shane, this is Ben. Just to, to clarify, do you say you, you don't plan to name a starter before Saturday at quarterback? Don't know why I would. Um, I'm sure Coach Houston would love that, and um, and he knows. I mean, he's got to get ready for carry on Joiner, and and he's got to they've got to get ready for Luke Doty and Zeb, and and you know we do a lot of different things offensively. So no, and guys, I'm not going to come in there on Tuesday and tell you who the starting quarterback is. So you don't need to waste time asking questions about who the quarterback is going to be and what the reps look like because I'm not getting into it. So um, sorry, um, that's where we are. Hey, Shane, this is Richard Breen from Columbia Metropolitan. I know you just mentioned Zaquandre, and I wanted to ask you to elaborate on him a little bit because I'm thinking back to last year when he was playing all over the field with all the attrition at the end of the year. And even last night when he was leading the team in rushing, he was still a gunner on punt coverage. And his role is going to change a little bit when Kevin Harris comes back. You know, is he kind of one of the unsung heroes on the team? Yeah, I absolutely uh, believe he is. And, and uh, just because Kevin Harris comes back doesn't mean that all of a sudden Zaquandre White is going to not be running the football anymore. I don't know if you guys had a chance to see him carry the ball last night. He's a he's a he's a stud when he has the ball in his hands, and we're going to continue to get him the ball. But I love what he's about. He loves to compete. I love the energy that he plays with. You're exactly right. Great that you noticed that. He's covering punts. Uh, he's on the kickoff return team. He's on the punt return team. Um, he, I mean, he does not want to come off the field. And a lot of guys, uh, they get tired. Their body language changes. Not him. Uh, he never gets tired. His body language never changes. He's very grateful for the opportunity to play here. He's very op- grateful for the opportunities he's been given and, and really happy that he was able to have, uh, have some success last night. Shane, this is Corey. Um, and a follow-up question on for Quan. Um, you know, interesting enough, I think he signed out of high school at Florida State to be a running back, and, and during his stint there, uh, they switched him over to linebacker. It, it, are there any traits uh, of the linebacker spot that that helps a kid as a running back? Yeah, good question. Um, certainly, I think the uh, physicality. Uh, of playing linebacker certainly helps the physicality he plays with at, at running back. Um, you know, when you're playing linebacker, you, uh, you've you got to be a downhill, quick twitch, uh, explosive guy to be a great linebacker. And I see those qualities in him, very quick, ch- very quick twitch, very explosive um, at, at running back. And, and then I think any time you play on the other side of the ball, I mean, it helped me as a coach, coaching offense and defense, because I had a familiarity with both sides of the ball and what the other side was trying to do to the to the side that I was on. And he may, I don't know if he would, I mean, I'm sure he, he gained something maybe from seeing how linebackers see things that helps him as a running back also. Hey, Shane, uh, Patrick Johnson, 94-3, the game in Greenville. I don't know how far you are into your, your ECU prep and study, but what uh, about East Carolina st- sort of stands out, if anything, uh, so far, what you've looked into? And were you able to maybe watch the game a little bit on Thursday night against App State? No. Um, 
uh, I wasn't. I had my radio show on Thursday night, and my parents were in town, so I, we're still renovating a house that we haven't gotten into. So we took my parents over there to show them the house, and well, we're living in a little rental house right now that I uh, tried like heck to find the game on television, and, and they didn't have the, the. I think it was on ESPNU, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. somehow or another. It wasn't on. We didn't have ESPNU. Now I know there's different ways on your phone and things like that that you can watch stuff. I'm not that technologically uh down on stuff but i got home and put kids to bed and didn't get a chance to see it uh i've watched just a little bit today uh we meet with our players on sunday afternoon and then recap our previous game and then go out on the field for an hour so i literally just sat down and we're going to jump into it as soon as i get off the call uh with you but first of all i have a ton of respect for mike houston and i don't really know him personally but what he's done at the places he's been uh speaks for itself he's won everywhere that he's been and and uh uh Ruffin McNeil and Lincoln Riley are two of my closest friends in the entire world and and I know what they did at East Carolina and I know the pride and that East Carolina has in that football program I've been going up against them ever since I was a uh, a sixth grader or fifth grader when my dad went to Virginia Tech um I know the atmosphere uh in Greenville I've been down there and, and like, in, like NC State and like North Carolina and, and, and us at Virginia Tech. I know what a challenging place it is to play because all three of those teams have gone in there and gotten beat. Uh, not as familiar with uh, some of their personnel, but, you know, very familiar with, with a lot of them. Uh, Holton, we tried to recruit when I was at Georgia, Holton Aylers, and uh, really liked him. I mean, the year that we uh, uh, were recruiting Justin Fields at Georgia, the other quarterback that we liked was Holton if we didn't get Justin. And uh, he's a fantastic football player and, and have followed his career and have a ton of respect for, for him. Ryan Jones uh, was with me, so familiar with Ryan. So got an understanding. C.J. Johnson, I remember seeing C.J. when we were recruiting Holton and, and watching, them, uh, watching them there in Greenville. So program that I have a lot of respect for. We have a lot of respect for Coach Houston and his staff. And, and we're fully aware of what a uh, challenge it'll be Saturday. Hey, James and Dave again. Um, you look at you mentioned uh, some of the the run game issues uh, in your opening statement there. What did, what do you think was the biggest problem after watching the film towards sealing those edges and then getting a real push uh, going north south and east in the first half? Uh, I think it's a combination. Uh, some of it was. Uh, you know, offensive linemen with their movement and some of their twists up front, not getting the uh, movement that we wanted up front. Uh, there's no excuse, uh, but that was part of it. Um, uh, a lot of it was uh, it was a combination of everything. Offensive line, a lot of it was tight end related. You know, our, our uh, hat placement not being where it needed to be, our leverage and pad level not being where it needed to be. A lot of it was wide receiver blocking. That uh, you know they may there may have been a play where they're supposed to be in there digging out a safety or or uh, cracking a linebacker or whatever it was and and didn't get it done. And then some of it was on the backs too. I mean they'll tell you there were certainly some some runs that were out there that uh, they misread and and maybe bounced the ball when they didn't need to or or uh, crammed it up inside when they needed to bounce it. And then a lot of that will come with experience and things like that. So it was a combination of of everything. I know it's easy when you don't run the ball as well as you would like to sit there and, and, you know, always point at the offensive line, but we all had a hand in it. Coaches with some of the calls, you know, that we'd like to have back and, and then, uh, and then the players out there on the field, but we'll be better. We got to put together a great plan uh, for Saturday and confident that we will, but, you know, we did a lot of good things there as well. Also, I thought, you know, our sense of urgency and, and body language and things like that improved as the game went on and, had a nice two-minute drive before the half where we used our timeouts and were able to get the ball back for the offense to score. We were able to finish the game out uh, and running the clock out when we were out there on offense and not having to punt. So a lot of things to build upon, but we just got to get better at the the details of each and every play and, and being better from that standpoint. Hey, Shane, I wanted – Oh, hey, it's Augusta. Um, I wanted to ask you about Marshawn Lloyd. Just kind of what did you see from him yesterday night, and how was he feeling, you know, finally getting to play last night after recovering from the ACL last year? I think he was uh, really excited, had a big smile on his face all night, and, and thought he had some nice runs. I mean, the couple that he would like to, to have back that, you know, he bounced and, and you know, probably should have uh, crammed up in. I thought he looked quick. I thought he looked fast. Uh, I thought he looked explosive. and. 
and I think he'll continue to get better week in, week out as he as he gains experience and continues to knock that rust off. Hey, Shane, it's Hale. I'm going to try again. Uh, I was just curious, what does Sunday practices look like for you guys? What's sort of your overall philosophy and structure with those? Of the what practices? I'm sorry. Your Sunday practices? What sort oh, of yeah. Overall? Um, no, it's very light. We don't do a whole lot on uh, on Sundays. Most of our time is spent in meetings, and then our players lift. And a lot of it is just trying to learn from yesterday and then physically, you know, get our bodies well after last night. And we're on the field for less than an hour. We go out there for about 45 minutes and and uh, have, a, have a special teams period for about eight minutes. We do some individual work just position-wise. We we get together kind of offense versus our offense separately than the defense just to maybe go through corrections from last night or, or introduce uh, some things on our upcoming opponent. And we do a seven on seven against each other to get some work in the passing game. And then we always do a, a two minute situation against the defense, offense versus defense, first group versus first group, just to work some two minutes. So we're out there in just helmets and, and nothing else. And we're out there for, uh, for less than an hour. And then it's a good opportunity too for us able to keep our, keep some of our young guys out there, obviously during the week, no, uh, we're full speed ahead on opponents, and and a lot of these younger guys are working on the scout team and things like that. So Sunday nights we're able to uh, keep the younger guys out there a little bit longer, where our position coaches can work with some younger guys that need some extra work. T.J. Sanders and Nick Barrett on the defensive line, for example, just to continue to develop them and and uh, help them get better because we're gonna we're gonna need them all before the year's out. Shane, Ben, again, just quickly, when you look back at that performance last night, I, I guess what kind of stood out when you were able to kind of look at it at film, and, and is there anything that maybe needed to be better, or what did you kind of pick out of out from it? No, I thought he did really well. Um, you know, just very, very uh, smooth and efficient. You know, we don't ask him to carry the ball a whole lot, but, you know, he did some nice play, nice job right there on that one third down, I think, scrambling out of the pocket and, and getting a first down. A couple times we – we uh, uh, had some in the passing game, had a couple, you know, passing routes that weren't uh, run exactly like we wanted them to be that uh, Zeb kind of ad-libbed and, and, uh, and made them right. But I thought he was, uh, I thought he was good for the most part, did a nice job. I uh, certainly got a, some of our play action stuff, the one touchdown pass we threw early to Josh Van uh, down there or by the cockpit. Uh, would have liked to have gotten a, you know, a better play fake off that, but you know, for the most part, it wasn't a whole lot to to uh, to pick apart. He did what he he did what he was supposed to do, and and uh, was very uh, went to right places with the ball, and and thought he played really well. Just a quick follow up on that. I mean, it seemed like you, you didn't really force anything. It seemed like I mean, did, did you guys kind of find that too? Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. He uh, managed the game well. We talk about protecting the football and. He uh, he certainly did that. He did a nice job. We we had that quarterback center exchange where we uh, fumbled uh, down there in the red zone, and he was able to you know jump right on that and and uh, did a nice job with it. So I was very impressed with him how he how he handled everything. Hey Shane, Dave again. Um, you know, looking at your defense, first shutout in 13 years, two picks, two sacks, had a pick six. What's going to be the encore? Did did Clayton get a, a game ball, anything like that? Did Al press for you with his unit? Yeah, we did give him a game ball in the locker room last night. You know, we uh, we actually gave a game balls to every single person in the program. We said was going to get one just because of their contributions and what we've we've all done together since uh, since January when we came back. But after he got a game ball for that, I also said I don't care who you're playing. It is hard to hold teams to zero points in today's college football, and to uh, have some guys out on defense to be a First year staff, new defensive coordinator, all that uh, opening ball game to have the first shutout here since I believe 2008, is what y'all said. And you know, I was an assistant coach here against NC State that night. And for that to be the first shutout, that's pretty impressive. So I was like, I'm, I'm, you're getting a game ball for that, uh, just for a shutout. Great job, Bob Clayton and his defensive staff. And, and, uh, you know, I don't know what the encore is. Hopefully we continue to create turnovers and score on defense and, and, uh, you know, dominate the line of scrimmage like those guys did last night. And, you know, if we continue to play hard and play fast and play physical, um, 
we'll be okay. Probably the thing I was most proud of. I mean, there were two things. And one is, one is uh, the defense and the staff we went through, and we're always looking for loafs to make sure that our guys don't take off a play, make sure they're playing every play full speed. And uh, we went through every play like we always do and, and couldn't find a single play where there was a lack of effort. I mean, you watch – you watch Jalen Foster's interception that got called back because of the penalty and just watch the tape of how hard the other 10 guys on defense are working to get him to the end zone. It was pretty cool to watch. And then I just love the mentality that after that play, there's all the excitement about what just happened. There's tons of energy in the stands. The players are excited. We have a, a penalty that was, that was pre-snap that was unacceptable, and they had to go right back out there on the field. and for them to not come out there with the same mentality and not compete like they like they did and instead they came right back out there uh, our mantra on mantra on defense put the ball down and they came right back out there Cody Eastern Illinois put the ball down and and stopped them again which I love to see Shane hey Patrick hey, Johnson Mr. again John, uh, uh, proud of tackling a couple of times uh, uh, since, since the game last night what what goes into having a good tackling performance in the first game out, how, how difficult is that to do? Uh, I think it's a lot because you, uh, you're you not playing against another team. You're you're not scrimmaging. Uh, so now you've got to manage in practice how much you practice or how much you tackle against each other in practice, and you're limited in that by the NCAA. Um, so we do. You know, we had two full-speed live tackling, de- uh, tackling scrimmages. And uh, certainly that helped. And, and then we work it in practice. I mean, we don't do really any live tackling in practice, but you can certainly work tackling drills. And and uh, and that's what uh, uh, that's what we did during the preseason. And and, uh, and 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 glad it showed. I think I heard uh, Patrick Johnson trying to answer yeah, the question. I'm yeah, I'm sorry about that. Thank you, Shane. Uh, could you just uh, you know, obviously we in Greenville know Virginia Tech Frank, Frank Beamer very very well. Uh, over the years, and, and to a degree, you as well. But uh, just could you maybe talk a little bit about the relationship with you and your your, your dad now, and and how much are you, you know, sort of picking that brain that has uh, just you know decades of of every experience imaginable. Yeah, um, no, I pick his brain a lot. I've been fortunate to be around a lot of great coaches in my career that I've worked for or worked with. I mentioned Lincoln and Ruffin earlier, who I think the world of and are close friends and pick their brain a lot and and uh certainly having a hall of fame coach for a dad uh pick his brain a lot i mean he was down here uh last night obviously for the game and i know he loved being part of it and i loved uh, him being part of it for sure and and uh you know certainly he's a phone call away and i think he's unless he changes his mind he and my mom are planning plan on being in greenville saturday uh, for the game, I think he thought when he retired that he'd never have to come to Greenville again. Nothing against Greenville, but he knows what a <laughs> tough place it is to play uh, there at East Carolina. And I think he'd had enough of those battles uh, over the years as well. I mean, I can remember 2011 at Virginia Tech. We went we went to the Sugar Bowl that year, played for the ACC championship, had a heck of a team, and and uh, came to Greenville that season and. We're, we were lucky to get out of there. I think it was something like 14 to 10 or 17 to 13, something like that. And and uh, he's had some battles in, in Greenville going back to the uh, Carlos or Crumpler days back in the 80s and all that. So he's got a ton of respect for East Carolina and so do I and, and what that program is about and, and the pride and tradition. And, um, and, and, and yes, absolutely. I, I love being able to pick my dad's brain on things, whether it be special teams or just – you know, overall program stuff. Shane, uh, Dave again, uh, talking with Jordan Birch last night after his pick six, and I think someone asked, you know, would you maybe mind running a few plays to tight end? And he said, well, you know, if they ever wanted me to, is there out of consideration? I mean, <laughs> I mean, we want to let him uh, do everything. Uh, we want to let him do everything he can to be the best defensive player he can be. Uh, but uh, who knows? You know, down the line, something. Uh, as big and fast and powerful as, and as explosive as that guy is, I think he could be anything that, that he wanted to be. He's continuing to work his craft on, uh, on defense right now, but who knows what the future holds. So, But I appreciate it. Off to work on East Carolina right now, and look forward to seeing you guys on Tuesday at the press conference. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Shane.